Welcome to Jumping Bomb Audio. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Jumping Bomb Audio, the show all about the world of Joshi Wrestling. Welcome in. We're happy to have you. A big week, a lot to talk about this week. And I am once again joined by my co-host, or for the month of October, you might call him my co-ghost, Kelly. Kelly, how do you feel? What's your thoughts about fall, about Halloween, about October? How do you feel about the month? I'm feeling real spooky right now. I'm a co-ghost. Ooh, haunting your phone. I'm going to go yes. through your pictures and find bad things. Oh, boy. That's a different, <laughs> <laughs> that's a strange kind of ghost. <laughs> a horror movie, uh, a ghost that tries to get you canceled. Yeah. Um, He's out to get movie. you canceled. <laughs> Hope you haven't well, set your is, uh... wiener to someone. Because <laughs> he's going to send it my... to people that don't want it. This is one of my favorite times of the year because it's not either boiling hot or freezing cold. Yeah. Uh, so I always like this time of year because it's very comfortable for about three weeks. And then in about three weeks, it'll be freezing cold for six months. Yep. So we hit 90 uh... degrees here on Monday. Like what the fuck? Oh really? We've been yeah. pretty. Uh, we've been pretty temperate. Although I think we're going to be at eighty tomorrow, but we've mostly been in the low seventies, which is uh, very nice considering we were in the uh, in August. We were in the high nineties. So yeah, I mean we've uh, we've irreparably broken the planet, but. Well, yes, but at this point, <laughs> I'll take a- anything under eighty degrees. I'm like, this is great. Yeah, looks like I've got seventies coming up this week, so that's good. Well, we've got a lot to talk about this week, but before we do that, we got to get our plugs in. So, of course, as always, follow us on Twitter at JBomb Audio uh, for the podcast, or you can follow us individually. I'm at Tay Mambo, and Kelly is at Comic Geek Kelly on Twitter. Uh, please subscribe to us on your podcast app of choice. And if that podcast app of choice is Apple Podcasts, give us a five star rating and review we'd really appreciate it and you're, if you're feeling extra generous you can donate to us at redcircle.com slash shows slash jumping dash bomb dash audio so a lot to talk about we're going to be reviewing the five-star grand prix finals from oda war gymnasium for stardom and also doing two not one but two big previews of the upcoming stardom show and tokyo joshi's Wrestle Princess 2, but first we got to kick it off with what is undoubtedly the biggest news of the week uh, in the world of Joshi. Jungle Kiona announced as departing stardom. Kelly, what do you think about this, to me, fairly shocking news? She's free. She's finally free. Um, it's very good news. Like, we'll get to actually see her wrestle again. I mean, she has been hurt. We know that. But I figured she would have been back by now at this point. But it's good to see her getting out and still going to wrestle. And it seems like there is weird circumstances that led to this. And it doesn't seem like anyone wants to go into talking about it, though. Yeah, she did say, I believe, in an interview that she will not discuss why she's leaving the promotion. It's unclear about whether it was a... A singular decision from either side. If it was a joint decision, we don't know. It could have to do with this injury that she has been dealing with now for quite a while. Uh, But according to her, she's been working at an advertising agency in Tokyo, uh, which she got. uh, She's been working there, I believe, full time, a job that she got uh, either through stardom or with stardom's help. Um, But she is rehabbing. She feels like she's ready to go and she still wants to wrestle. Um, 
She's willing to, you know, work freelance. She says she wants to put together a show in her hometown of Nagoya. Uh, so all good things to hear for fans of Jungle Kiona that she still will be wrestling. I know when it first happened, there were some, you know, people mentioning that, oh, maybe she could go to AEW, I would assume, with a full-time job in this advertising agency unless she were to, you know, leave this job, which seemingly would be shocking that she announced that she's doing this and then would leave. Yeah. Uh, that would seem to preclude her from going really out anywhere outside of Japan, AEW, WWE, anything like that. Um, but as people know, I am a huge Jungle Kiona fan. I'm very excited to see, even if she ends up just working, you know, a show a month for some of these smaller promotions, I'm excited to see her. Uh, sort of spread her wings outside of of the world of world of stardom. Sorry for the pun. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I'm I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, it definitely feels like she'll be used, and you know, like that's she's a big name coming out there, so she'll get decent uh, matches and won't just waste away. You know, you never know, you know, it's certainly possible that she could go back to stardom. But in my opinion, let's say, you know, predicting into the future, let's just say she never goes back to stardom. I have to say this is one of the, in my opinion, all time botches of a talent in wrestling history to me. It's a up there. huge talent. Uh, it's certainly up there, you know, maybe probably not number one, but certainly up there. A huge talent. Uh, so good in ring and never was, never was even given really anything was given some tag reign, some multi-person title, never got a singles title, um, in stardom and just feels like someone who was so beat down. I mean, it became a running joke as I'm sure everyone is aware, just became so beat down in the booking. And it's such a bummer that you know, as happy as I am to see her be able to maybe go somewhere where she gets a little bit more appreciation in the booking, uh, a bit of a bummer that she isn't getting that opportunity in stardom. You know, so much of the time in stardom, she would lose a match. People would be sad. And, the you know, the saying people would always say, oh, you know, you you just got to wait for it because next time it's going to be, you know, that's going to be the time and she's going to, you know, do Trust X, the y, process. Thing. Trust the process. I mean, the whole thing with, oh, Konami turning on Jungle Kiona now, Jungle g getting injured. But then the whole thing was, oh, Jungle Kiona is going to come back. She's going to have such a great story with Konami and it's going to be amazing and she's going to get a revenge. Obviously, that story is off the table. And you I don't know, think mostly. that story would have been any good because the angle that wrote Kiona out is one of the dumbest things that company's ever done. Well, and I agree with that on the other side because I think that Konami has now just become sort of a, you know, middle... You know, when she turned, it was like, wow, a hot new thing and Konami's going to be great. And it seems like she sort of just sunk back into the... She sort of rose up briefly and then sort of sunk back to the same level where she was before she joined Oedo Tai. She's just a um, little bit away from being one of the Oedo Tai geeks. Yeah, so, but sort of a bummer there to never see Jungle win the big one in her, you know, in stardom. But hopefully she'll be able to go, uh, you know, I'm sure people are talking about Seedling or, you know, it could be an, it could be a number of different promotions. It could be many different promotions as we've seen uh, freelancers you know, Itsuki Aoki working so many promotions, someone like that, able to really go around and experience all of these different styles. So I hope Jungle is able to do that and that we can see more from her because I think that she has deserved more and deserves more in the future. Definitely. Yeah, I'm excited for whatever comes next for her. Well, speaking of stardom, they had their five-star Grand Prix Finals on September 25th at Oda War Gymnasium. It was a sellout of 1,539 fans, very well drawn, and actually, funny enough, a rare write-up in the Wrestling Observer newsletter this week. Uh, Stardom doesn't get a ton of coverage in that publication, but a little bit of talk here, and I wanted to include it. Uh, 
Dave Meltzer writing an injury to Julia forced a change in the booking trajectory for stardom and its five-star Grand Prix. The original booking plan was for Julia to win the tournament that ended on September 25th at Oda War Gymnasium in Tokyo, which would have led to a match with World of Stardom champion Utami Hayashita on December 29th at Sumo Hall in Tokyo. Stardom announcing their next big show at Sumo Hall on December 29th. Uh, that was a big announcement on the show. But two episodes ago, I did predict that Julia would win the five-star Grand Prix. You did. And according to this, I was correct. It's funny because we news both f- get to be right then. <laughs> yes. The good news for us is that we end up both being right in a way. <laughs> I got the pre-injury booking and you got the post-injury booking. So we both can take victory laps on knowing exactly what could happen and neither of us were wrong. In your head, everyone, imagine that you're all in a room together in a circle and Taylor and I are just going around doing a lap, high-fiving each of you. (laughs) So there were uh, a lot of matches on the show. But first, before we dive into all these matches, Kelly, what did you think of the show overall? I thought it was a really good show. Uh, The undercard was somewhere between... To like one really good standout match. Uh, But then the top of the card all delivered. Yeah, I thought it was a good show. I think we're probably going to have a lot of the same thoughts as we, you know, not specific thoughts, but sort of general thoughts. I feel sort of generally the same as I felt on that first uh, five star Grand Prix show, which we reviewed on the podcast, where it's just so many. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's just so many matches and they're all singles matches. And especially as you get closer to the top, they're all sort of same style single matches that there was a point where I was sort of like, who can, okay. Like, here we go. You know, I don't know how they could have combated that without putting some of these matches on different cards, but it was just like, especially because I ended up, I watched both the dark matches. Uh, I didn't watch this live. So I ended up watching it on stardom world. Same. Uh, and, and with the two dark matches, it's just like a lot, uh, just a lot of matches. Now, most of the matches weren't all that long. Some of them were very short. Yeah. Like that was, um, whenever you got a really short one, that was nice. That was a nice little treat. Um, and I ended up, uh, uh Kelly, I don't know what you, I don't know what you did, but I actually ended up for the first time with stardom watching with the English commentary. I did as well, um, which was Stuart Fulton. And then uh, Stuart was later joined by Mina Shirakawa. Just wanted to see, hadn't listened to, you know, obviously Stuart Fulton was on some of the Tokyo Joshi shows that they did, but hadn't gotten a chance to hear him uh, as part of stardom. So I was interested to see what that was like. Uh, So we'll talk about that as we go through. But opening up, there were two uh, dark matches. Well, the first technical match on the show, which didn't occur, was Momo Watanabe defeating Julia by disqualification because Julia is injured. Um, That confused the the, hell out of me when I saw it on Cage Match. (laughs) Well, and the thing is, they have been putting it on all the shows where the matches were supposed to happen first. Okay. And I had a couple shows where I was like watching and I was like, okay, how many um, five-star Grand Prix matches are on the show? And I would just sort of do a quick yeah, like, look through just to see the words like five-star Grand Prix. And I'd be like, oh, one, two, three, four, five. And then I'd click through the video file and it'd be like, wait a minute, there's only four. And then I'd be like, what am I missing? And I'd go back and I'd see like, oh, defeats Julia. <laughs> and I was like, oh, this is a match that didn't ever occur. Um, but as you said, yes, it's listed on cage match. Uh, but the two dark matches on the show, weirdly, weirdly finishing at the exact same time. Whoa. Hanan defeated Momo Watanabe and Rina and Mei Sakurai defeating Wakasukiyama both occurring in five minutes and 24 seconds. That's wild. Which is crazy to me. Didn't realize it watching live. It happens um, again later in the show. Uh, Koguma and Himika, 619. Mayu and oh, Starlight Kid, 619. Right. Now I'm like... So, <laughs> not that I not that I distrust the, the entry of, of Cage Match, which is what we're going off. 
But now I'm like, is that true that they had <laughs> two sets of consecutive matches that ended at the exact same second? Like if they were close, if it was like 619, 625, I'd be like, okay. Hmm. Fascinating. I don't know. Someone look into that, time those matches, yeah, and get back to us if they finished at the exact same time, because that <laughs> is fascinating. Um We'll sort of group these two matches together. Uh, I don't have much to say. As I just mentioned, they only went about five minutes. Um, Hannon, by the way, it was a three-way match. Uh, pinned Rina, not Momo Watanabe. <laughs> she who, she who beat was Momo. It was super the... weird. <laughs> <laughs> she beat Momo, and then they're like, Momo, you're going to the finals. <laughs> um, no, so I don't have t- too much to say about either of these matches. I thought they were fine. They were both dark matches. Uh, May Sakurai and Waka Tsukiyama. I like Waka, um, but I wasn't necessarily all that excited to see this match between two of the probably least experienced uh, workers on the roster. But I thought they did. I thought they uh, pulled it off fairly well. Yeah. And uh, I, I thought they they did well. Kelly, do you have any any thoughts about either of these uh, two matches? I've realized who My Sakurai reminds me of finally. And it is a ECW mainstay Kelly Kelly. All she, right, explain. <laughs> she's not very good, but she tries. And a lot of times she'll try something and it looks like it's going to hurt herself. Like there's a lot of times where I feel like she's just going to fall down at any second and like just destroy her leg somehow. But yeah, I like it. she's trying, so I give her that. But yeah, I the undercard were they were they were definitely uh dark matches. Uh anything not involving Momo was kind of rough. <laughs> yeah, I mean May Sakurai has looked much better than she did in that first match with Unagi yes. that looked like it was a total like, oh, this person is not even like able to be counted on to like just get in the ring and like do like have a match that goes like just like C level like you had a match and you got through it and it was fine. Yeah, I honestly think this might have been the best performance yet that I've seen from both Sakurai and Sukiyama. Oddly enough, yes, of course. In, in only five minutes, you would hope that the you know. There's not too much to it, so you would hope that things wouldn't go disastrously. Yeah, but um, like even it, like in it. the some of the uh, challenge series matches where Sakurai was against like way more experienced people, she looked pretty bad. But so even like these two just together, their experience level not being high, I thought it worked out for whatever reason. Well, those were the two dark matches, and then we went into the main show, which is comprised of entirely five-star Grand Prix matches. A lot to cover here. So the first one uh, in the uh, five-star Grand Prix, Mina Shirakawa defeating Natsupoi by countout in 727 when she slid back into the ring. Natsupoi was outside of the ring, uh, and Mina slid in to... Uh, beat the count out and get the two points. She finished at six points. Natsupoi finishing at nine points in the block. Uh, this was a match that actually really surprised me. I really enjoyed this. As I've talked about before, I think Natsupoi is a very solid, steady hand in the ring. I think she's got a great style, that sort of high speed style. And I actually, I really liked the finish. Uh, there's so many times in really all of wrestling now where you sort of get the count out tease and it's like, Oh, eight, nine. And the person slides in and it's like, mm, okay. Yeah, I no, liked the that. Count they went out was with... awesome here. Like it. it yeah. I, I liked that. They went with it, that it was the finish that it led to the finish. And I thought the work was pretty good. I ended up going three and three quarters. So I uh, really enjoyed it. Wow. I, I went flat three. I liked it a lot, but yeah, I didn't like it to, I didn't like it that much, but the, yeah, I loved the count out finish. I thought that was done really well. It never felt like, oh, they're stretching things out out here. It's like, no, they actually kind of had like a little competitive match outside the ring and then Mina won. It was, it was fun. I, I thought that was a great opener. 
I mean, my sort of controversial opinion is that I would have put Mina in the pon- in the position that Unagi Sayaka is in because I think that she's slightly yeah. more charismatic in the ring and I think she's slightly more talented in the ring. I now, would agree. I don't know if she has the upside that Unagi may have, but to me, it's just someone who it's and they put her on commentary um, in this show, so she has some English speaking skill as well. I I just think that she's a pretty solid in ring. Like I said, I thought this match was really good. I thought she worked well with Natsupoi. So that's sort of my controversial opinion. I know a lot of people really love Unagi. And it's less of a knock against her and more that I think that Mina has really surprised me as someone who has been very solid since she came in. My guess is that they went with... Oh, never mind. I was going to say they went with... uh... Unagi over Mina because the age difference, but Unagi's only uh, Unagi's thirty two and Mina's thirty three. So I thought Unagi was a little younger than that. The next match in the on the five star Grand Prix Finals. This one we're gonna Kelly. I hope you have a lot to say about this match. Oh, so uh, much. Fuk- Fukigen Death defeating Saki Kashima in one minute and 52 seconds. Fukigen Death finishing with 10 points. Saki Kashima finishing with four points. Uh, Kelly, I leave it to you. Uh, this was exactly what you think it is. Uh, just picture this match in your head, and that's what it was. If you like people miming smoking, yeah, doing bits about cigarettes... You like newspapers? This match is for you. This match is, is yeah. If if you amazing. enjoy a fake cigarette and a newspaper, you'll love this match. Uh, so the next match <laughs> on the show was our first of the supposedly six minute and nineteen second long matches. Uh, Koguma defeating Himika in six minutes and nineteen seconds. Boyaka, boyaka. <laughs> Um, this was a match. This is one of those matches. It was sort of, we're getting to the middle of this card where for me, a lot of this stuff, short matches sort of ran together. I think Koguma did, uh, very well. Koguma finishing 11 points, Himika finishing 10 points. I'm sort of interested to see Himika's, um, sort of path moving forward. It felt to me. Like she sort of got lost in the shuffle in this five star Grand Prix. You know, she started later than everyone else except for Aroha. And it never really felt like she was much of a factor, even though she finished with 10 points um, in the block. And um, as we'll talk about in a second, she just won a title uh, today. So that gives her something. But it just has felt to me very much like she has sort of gotten lost in the shuffle of all these people that she's very much in the mid card and that's just sort of where she lives. And I'm not really sure what their plans are for her. It felt like when she originally came in that she was going to have really, it was her and Micah. Uh, We're going to have the wind behind them. And it has sort of felt to me as if the promotion has gone with Micah over her in an either or situation where sort of Micah has gotten the boost and Himika has not. Um, but I, I guess we'll see moving forward. As I said, she just won a title. So maybe that's the little boost that she needs, but just feels sort of like a non entity at this moment in time in the promotion. Yeah. I definitely think her schedule for the tournament had something to do with that because it, it, she was so, it felt like she was so far behind that she would, even though she did kind of catch up to a lot of the top people, it's like, eh. She's not going to catch up by this time. So it's like, hey, you kind of just wrote her off immediately. And I feel like, yeah, sure. She's definitely been kind of put on the back burner for things. And I feel like a big chunk of that has to do with uh, a lot of the cosmic angels coming in. Or like, you know, we really we could call them Rossi's angels because I feel like that's kind of what it is. It's like you can see they kind of want to push them more than Himika now. But yeah, I definitely think that Micah also was chosen over her as well. Yeah, and I think part of that is 
you know, it was exciting when they had that period of all these, deb- you know, debuted. It seemed like someone was debuting like every week at, at one point. But it does become a thing where the more people debut, those people who are debuting are probably at least for some amount of time going to get some focus naturally from the promotion. They're the debuting wrestler. It happens everywhere in wrestling. You know, a wrestler debuts, you want to focus them on them at least for a little bit. And but the thing is, there's seemingly just so many debuts happening that it's then hard for people like Himika to continue the momentum if they don't you know, Himika gets a title shot, she doesn't win. And then it's like, well, where's the momentum going to come from? Because XYZ person or persons have now debuted and they need the focus outside, you know, with the challenge, you know, Waka's challenge series, May Sakurai's challenge series. Those are sort of the focus lower down on the card. Yeah. Um, So it's just a tricky. And as I've talked about before, this is not a promotion that is very good at keeping people afloat when no. they're not directly in title pictures. You know, this is not a promotion like Ice Ribbon that can take someone like Suzu Suzuki. She loses the title and they keep focus on her with, a you know, the hardcore series and now the tag team and things like that. And I think that this in a situation like this, I think a lot of people would agree Himika is very talented. She's got a unique look. She's, you know, one of the bigger members of the roster and, you know, is sort of strangely getting lost in the shuffle when I don't think she should be because I, in my opinion, she should be one of the focuses of the promotion. Mm -hmm. And now I'm really thinking about it. The they pretty much just did like, okay, we have Dana, Dana Del Mondo. We did all these debuts. And then someone at the booking, we Rossi or someone was just like, hey, what if we do that again? What, and they're like, what? And they're like, what if? What if? Okay. And we keep debuting people who are new. But we make sure they got cool boobs. And then everyone just applauded and stood up. And he was like, all right, who are we going to fo- put this around? Uh, Tom? All right, cool. Let's go. Let's do this. Who cares about stars? Who cares about the people we've debuted recently? We're going to do it again. Just keep on rolling. And that makes me wonder if there's just going to be another per- group that pops up. Or they'll, maybe they'll reinforce stars. And they'll just keep doing this until the roster explodes. Yeah, I would be fascinated in an alter, a sort of alternate reality because I think that, you know, Shuri, and we'll talk about her in a second as she's higher up on the card, but obviously is super ta- immensely talented, super talented. But let's say that that match a couple months ago with Utami it happens and the consensus is like it's four and a quarter star, like a good match, not a great match. You know, Dave doesn't talk about it. I just wonder if Suri gets that focus or if she sort of went, okay, went out and had this incredible match, got all this focus on the promotion. Um, the most focus on stardom that's happened sort of in the larger world of wrestling in quite a while. You know, if that isn't, like, did that force their hand to be like, okay, she's really good and we're going to focus on her, you know, have her win the Grand Prix now that Julia's out? Or if this was their plan all along, I don't know, because that would be interesting. Because to me, it feels sort of like, again, until today where they won the artist title, that Donna Del Mundo had as a group, except sort of for Julia, but now Julia's injured, sort of taken a step back. They seemed very hot um, for a while. Obviously, they were the big focus of the um, promotion, and now they seem to be much less focused on, except for, of course, Shuri, who has now won the five-star Grand Prix. But just something to think about. We'll never know the answer because we cannot travel to that alternate dimension where that (laughs) happens, but... Just something, I, just something I think about from time I wonder, to time. Maybe would they have slotted Micah in that spot? Yeah, I don't know. It, um, d- I d- don't know. Yeah, we'll never truly know. If you can look into other universes, let us know. <laughs> uh, next up on the card, another. Sp- Match that finished in six minutes and 19 seconds. Mayu Iwatani defeating Starlight Kid. 
uh, Mayu Iwatani and Starlight Kid both finishing at 11 points. Uh, Mayu's victory here kept Starlight Kid out of the finals, instead sending Momo Watanabe through to the finals, a decision that I think is the correct decision, as we talked about last episode. I think Starlight Kid is hot right now. She's got the wind at her sails, and but I don't think she's at the level where she would win the five-star Grand Prix, so I think putting her in the finals and having her lose is would have not been the right decision. So I think this was the right decision. It gives Mayu a little bit of... Uh, the one up on Starlight Kid, who dissed her in the past. And this was a, another match I thought very short, only six minutes, 19 seconds. But to me, it was like a three and a half star match. I thought it was very solid. I actually went four and a quarter. I loved this match. Uh, the brutal strikes. They beat the hell out of each other. Uh, there was one like kind of major botch in the match, but I can't really dock them because I don't think what they were going for is humanly possible. Because, like, Mayu was going to do, like, a Razor's Edge, and they wanted uh, Starlight Kid to do a Poison Rana out of that, and I just, I don't think you can do that. So, you know, it's cool to be ambitious. (laughs) But, like, yeah, I loved the match. I thought it was great. It honestly, I couldn't tell you how long it was. I would have guessed it was longer than 619, but, yeah, I don't know. It was awesome. Yeah, I also would have guessed it was longer than 619. And as I said, maybe the time maybe the time on here is wrong. Um, but I don't know. And I can't watch the match as we're recording this podcast. That would be sort of strange. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you obviously really lo- loved it. I liked it. Uh, I wasn't all that affected by the, you know, by the mistake. It was just one. They sort of got out of it and then it was over. Uh, and those things happen. I don't know if they were, it looked sort of like they were going for a poison Rana, but maybe they were just going for like a hurricanrana out of the move. It wasn't entirely clear. Obviously they didn't hit it. Yeah. Um, but it, I think it there's probably, if they had, it would have been fucking awesome, but <laughs> I think there's probably more to this. Mayu starlight kids story. Definitely. Um, so maybe, it's a maybe they'll attempt it and hit it in a future match and we can uh, find out what it was meant to be. This match uh, and later we'll talk about it, the match with Konami it really makes me wish that Wado Tai would just bump out all the geeks and it would be Starlight Kid, Konami and like Hazuki. It's like, man, I don't I don't need any of the other Wado Tai people anymore. I'm I'm over it. We'll see you in the next yeah. match with uh, Zumi versus Raka. Like, <laughs> man, I don't want this match. Yeah. So the next, speaking of the next match, uh, Azumi defeating Ruaka in three minutes and thirty nine seconds. Azumi finishing with eight points. Uh, Ruaka, uh, the sole finisher in either block of the five star Grand Prix, to finish with zero points. Good total. Good. She's one of my um, least favorite wrestlers in the whole world. Uh, and why? So Kelly, explain because I'm not a huge fan of her, but I just sort of watch her matches and I'm like, ah, eh, she's a young wrestler, and these matches are whatever. And this match was just barely over three and a half minutes long. So what is your? She where's the issue? She doesn't sell anything. Just nothing. She no, no one does anything like and and she just doesn't sell to anything. Like I there was that match where Konami just had to shoot kick her in the head so she'd fucking sell something. Like her facial expression never changes. She barely gets any of her moves. She's just so bad. Ah, I hate it. <laughs> I felt I do in, th- in my notes I have sucks that Azumi was saddled with this match. Yes, and it certainly seems to me like Azumi has now taken up fully the mantle of a couple months ago. It was sort of her and Starlight Kid both in this weird area of they're very talented, they're very good, and they're not really getting pushed and they just sort of float around. Yeah, Starlight Kid obviously turning, getting the momentum, and is now seemingly sort of moving up the car, getting more focus. And now it's solely Azumi sort of stuck in this world of like, this is a really talented wrestler. 
and just sort of nothing really happened. Like she doesn't feel like she has really any direction. No, I would love to see Izumi leave and go somewhere else. Cause I think anywhere else she'd be pushed to the top of the card instantly. Yeah, it will be interesting to me because now Jungle Kiona leaving. And I think that it other people could leave, although I'm not sure if other people will leave. Like, I'm like, oh, maybe Jungle Kiona will be the first. I'm not saying there's going to be a mass exodus of people leaving the promotion, but maybe one or two other people as this promotion keeps on filling up will say, hey, I'm not getting uh, I'm not in the position I want to be. Uh Maybe I'll leave, but that's a tough decision because obviously the stardom um, promotion is very strong. The pay is better than other promotions because they have more financial backing. Um, But it'll be interesting to see. I'm like, does someone like Azumi leave when she's been there literally for years? It's where she trained and things like that. I can't say. I don't know because we haven't been at this point in the promotion where you're like, it's so chock full of people and... You know, everyone is talented. You know, in the past, it was like, okay, we have four or five people who can, uh, like, main event, and the rest of them are undercarders. That's yeah. not the case anymore. So Ooh. I just don't know <laughs> what it looks like going forward. And it definitely feels like the booking is really only interested in the new toys for the most part. Like, Azumi's been there for it. Azumi's been there too long, and she's too good to where it's just like, ah, hey, old faithful, here you go, mid card. And it's like, it, it took Starlight Kid having to turn heel before they'd be like, okay, we'll do something with you now. So Azumi needs to do either something to change herself up, or she needs to leave because I don't think she'll ever be elevated because they just have decided she's she's not there. She's not in that position. Yeah, and I just have to say one thing about Ruaka, which is, as I mentioned, I was listening to the English commentary uh, who mentioned during this match, they said, oh, Ruaka is styling herself after Natsuko Tora. And I was like, oh, Don't no. Yeah, no, I heard that, too. I was like, well, of course. I know many people disagree with me, but I think Natsuko Tora is now injured, obviously, Hopefully she comes back and is very healthy, comes back as soon as she can. To me, that would be an opportunity to debut a new Torah because to me, the sort of Oz Academy ripoff uh, Natsuka Torah is a gigantic failure and has been for a long time. Yeah. Um, there was, uh, I believe it was the, was it the Mike, which... Which of these matches had the Oedo? Was it Micah Konami had the Oedo tie interference? Yes, I believe so. Um, and I was just like, I hadn't seen it in so long, and I just saw it again, and I was like, oh, my yeah. God. Um, I just think the whole thing of that unit has totally gone off, and they need to sort of be like, clean slate. Like, maybe Tora does come back and it's like, clean slate. I'm not this type of heel anymore. You know, I'm this, you know, I've changed it a little bit. Not that I'm coming back and I'm a valiant baby face or anything. But just I'm not that sort of thing. Because to me, that sort of thing has been a flop. Definitely. Um, I think like... And you in- have people in the unit, like Starlight Kid and Konami now, who can sort of do, you know, be heels, but also be very good and not rely solely on, okay, five people are going to interfere in the match and we're going to get DQ'd and things like that. And that's what I would be focused on. Yeah, that's like I was saying earlier, just I want the geeks taken out of Wado Tai. I don't know what you do with them. I don't know if you keep them around or you let them go or what. But it's just like, ah, the, the unit is so stale. Like I just disband it do something. I don't know. Cause you've pretty much blown up stars, blow up Oito Tai and start fresh with new kind of units. Yeah. I don't know that they'll ever break up Oito Tai cause they sell a lot of merch. It's sort of like a bullet club. Yeah. It makes sense. Uh, issue where I feel, you know, I haven't watched new Japan in a number of months, but I'm like bullet club is still, that's still a thing that's bullet, going on. Bullet there. club is fine. <laughs> um 
And of course, there's always something to, even with any, even if you had five units that were all going great, there is something to keeping it fresh, you know, changing it up. Um, it's something that someone like Dragon Gate that is focused very much on units does a pretty good job at, which is that the units are constantly, you know, not every show, not every month, but you don't ever really feel like, oh my God, we've had all five of these units for the last, you know, three years. Yeah, they when usually blow change, it up when before some change it feels happen. stale. Yeah. Um, but anyway, back to the show. Uh, the next match, Unagi Sayaka defeating Sayaka Matani in 11 minutes and 53 seconds. Unagi finishing with nine points. Um, and Sayaka Matani finishing with 11. Kelly, what did you think of this match? Uh, I thought this was good. I went, uh, what did I go? Three and a half? No, three and a quarter. No, three and a half. Wow. I, did, I looked at the wrong match twice. Okay. Yeah, no, three and a half. Uh, I thought it was pretty good. Unagi really is growing as a wrestler, and she she looked really good here, I thought. So you're going with three and one third. Yes, uh, exactly. <laughs> I thought that this match was pretty solid. This sort of fell in the range of... It was before sort of the big matches at the top, but there had been so many matches already at this point on the card that I was like, okay, this is pretty good. Mm -hmm. And I don't really have a lot of strong feelings about it because I've just watched so many matches. It's in the, and it's it felt just like in the glut at this point. It's in the glut, but also it feels very much like, ah, this is also a match where it doesn't really matter. Yeah. It's not a block determiner. It's not, it's just sort of like, well, you got to go out there and wrestle and you, you might get more points to make yourself, you know. Yeah. That's so, the one problem with round robin tournaments where at the end when it's like, okay, most of these matches are going to be meaningless on the final night. Yeah. So to me, it sort of has that same thing that a lot of Saya matches have where I don't, I just don't really feel like there's a lot of connective tissue to it to like string me along with a story. Like I would love to see Saya do some, even though I know she's very good at this high flying, high athletic stuff, like do a couple matches where it's like work a body part um, just to see that sort of story. Because sometimes it just feels like here's a move and here's a move. And I've said this before on the podcast, so I won't go too much into it, but yeah, it was just one of those matches where I was sort of like you. I was like, oh, three and a quarter, and okay, moving on. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was fine. Uh, it I, it wasn't bad, which is the best thing you can be at this point. Just keep on coasting into the next match. And the next match was Micah defeating Konami in six minutes and 11 seconds, Micah finishing with nine points. Konami doing well, finishing with 10 points. Uh, this one, I sort of had a similar feeling. You know, I always enjoy Konami matches, and I wish she was sort of higher up the card because I think she brings a sort of natural style change to this sort of thing where it's like we're seeing sort of a very similar in the next three matches. I think we're all fairly similar. This sort of big bomb throwing, hard hitting style, and Konami naturally brings this sort of more submission based style, which I always really enjoy. But this match, you know, only six minutes and eleven seconds, so not all that long. But don't really another match. I was sort of like, yeah, this was uh, pretty good, um, and just sort of moved on. And then, of course, the focus was on the top three matches, which we'll talk about in a second. Yeah, I thought uh, in this match, Mina did a really good job of putting over Micah's strength on the commentary. I thought that was a nice touch. Yeah, and I thought we haven't really... Ta- I said we talk about it, and now we haven't really talked about it. But I thought commentary <laughs> was was pretty good. Yeah. Um, I thought Mina sort of started off naturally uh, a little bit shy on commentary, which is not surprising. But I thought she got pretty comfortable by the end in the last few matches. Um I guess my one major sort of, and it wasn't really an issue, but I would say that Stuart Fulton, it felt like in a lot of matches, the first like five minutes of the match were like the reading of 
the stats. It was like okay, the match yeah. would begin and he would be like, um, you know, Micah is part of Donna Del Mundo and she has four wins in her last six matches and she is doing this and she was trained by Takamichi Noku and like things would be going on in the ring and it was like a reading. Uh, it was like, okay, here's all the stats that I have in front of me and I can't call the match until I get, get my through all in. the stats that I have written on my sheet. It did feel like Mina helped that a little bit. Like I yes. felt that more early on in the show and I felt like Mina being there, he knew that he couldn't just sit there and be like, here's the information I have uh, <laughs> about this person. Cause she would be giving, you know, she would be saying things that he would then have to respond to. And I know that calling, I mean, I don't know this, but I imagine it that calling a wrestling show by yourself is very difficult. Uh, but that was really my only complaint. I, I thought they both did very well. Uh, I thought it added to the show um, very well. So overall, I was very uh, I was very positive on the English commentary. Yeah, I was super happy with the commentary. I thought they did really well. Uh, Mina certainly was not like a Yoshitatsu. Like she she did really well. And uh, yeah, no, I hope they keep bringing back the English commentary of her stardom. And then we get into the big top three matches. The first one. Uh, Shuri and Takumi Aroha going to a 20 minute time limit draw. Shuri finishing with 12 points. Takumi Aroha finishing just short with 11 points. Uh, this was a match before we get into it. Uh, the Wrestling Observer actually gave some star ratings to these top matches. The Wrestling Observer going four and a half. On this match, I was very close. I went four and a quarter, uh, thought it was very good. Uh, a great sort of meshing of styles. They have very similar styles, uh, Shuri and Aroha, but not exactly the same. And I thought they meshed really well together. It was hard hitting and I thought it was exciting. I think a little bit got taken off for me in that sort of very early on, I sussed out that this was going to a time limit draw. And so when it hit the time limit draw, I was sort of like, okay, this is where that was going. That probably held it back a little for me, but I still thought a, a very good match. Yeah, I went uh, four and a half on it. Uh, I liked this a lot. It was just 20 minutes of them throwing bombs. Uh, I kind of figured it was going to be a time limit draw even before it started. So I don't think, I don't know if that really hurt it for me or anything. But yeah, I, I thought it was really good. It was my favorite match of the show. Oh, that's uh, that's interesting to hear because we still got two more matches. Uh, so your favorite? Yeah, it just kind of it's more my style. Just really hard hitting people beating the shit out of each other. A, a real beef slapper, as I would say. Well, the next match on the card was uh, Tom Nakano defeating Utami in 13 minutes and 55 seconds. Tom Moving up to 10 points with the win. Utami staying at 10 points with a win, which meant Suri would go through to the finals. This one also got four and a half stars from the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Kelly, what'd you think of this one? I thought it was good. I went uh, four flat on this one. Uh, one thing I noticed is this is clearly the match where Lady C hurt her eye. Because there is a bit when she was catching Tom on a dive and she went down holding her eye and then very quickly walked to the back. <laughs> so it's like, okay, because I was wondering, like, I've seen the pictures of her on Twitter with the eye patch. And I was like, well, what the hell happened? And I saw this match like, oh, okay, that's what happened. Although good that she just sort of you're like, oh, I'm injured and now I'm not needed because I've caught that dive. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. Out. No, good on her for for knowing enough to just be like, you know what? I should go to the back and get this taken care of. Because <laughs> <laughs> I feel like a lot of young wrestlers would just kind of stay there and tough it out. It's like, no, no, no. Take care of yourself. Yes. Health always comes first. Yep. Health or should always come first. Yeah. Yeah, um, I thought this was good. They definitely worked it like it could have been the main event. Uh, I found it interesting that it's like, okay, the two top champions end up at the same level, essentially, both at 10 points. But you did have Tom win, so I wonder if they'll do a unification match somewhere down the line. 
Yeah, I um, I don't know. I mean, I don't really see at this point. I think having the separate titles helps, especially if you're going to continue to run sort of bigger shows, because I think having two titles or maybe have the ability to main event with the quote unquote lower, you know, lesser of the titles, whichever that happens to be at whatever point you're running is very valuable to them. You know, it's not the same as like New Japan where they're getting big audiences all over the place and they're like, well, we can unify the titles because it's a big match and it'll be worth having, you know, a unification match, which will draw big is worth more than having this sort of secondary title for X amount of time. Um, But is interesting. I mean, I think it's nice to say to sort of give credence to the fact that they are sort of equivalent titles you know you don't really i don't think the promotion really wants one thought of as underneath the other even though that sort of naturally happens but giving tom the win sort of is like hey these people are on the same footing because one of them could beat the other one even though tom is you know considered holding the lesser quote unquote of the two belts um but this was a match that i think was hurt by being in between the two matches it was in between Definitely. I think it was very sort of similar in style. And I think I just got to the point where I was like, okay, like at this point, how many matches had it been, you know, like 12 matches and it's like, okay, I, I get it now. So I was probably lower. I was probably like three and a half, like still a very well-worked match, but didn't really connect with me. Um, it was not super long considering it was a semi-main event at only under 14 minutes. Mm -hmm. Um, that's what kind of saved the show for me is the shorter matches because at this point i was kind of feeling like i don't really want to watch this show anymore (laughs) but like it it was over pretty quickly which was good yeah i actually ended up before the main event i was watching i had watched the whole show and i was like i am gonna pause and i'm gonna take like an hour break and do something else and come back to the show Because it was very much, the closer you got to the top, it was like, we are all going to do the same style match. It's just very tough having shows. And I think this way about most tournaments, I'm a person who I do not particularly connect um, with tournament style wrestling. I just think it's a lot of the same thing. Uh, The G1, you know, people get very excited about the G1 back when I used to watch the G1, usually the first like five days I'd be like, yeah, 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 this is really great. And by like day six, it's like, okay, we got more, you know, (laughs) more matches. Oh, and then we got more. And it just becomes like, sort of like, okay, singles matches. And I'm someone who also very much connects with sort of big stories. And it's very hard to tell a big story in a tournament beyond I want to win and get two points and I don't want to lose and get zero points. So to me, I'm just sort of like, yeah. So I think there's sort of a natural barrier for me that doesn't really have anything to do with, in this case, stardom or any promotion. It's just sort of like, this is not the wrestling for some people. Tournaments are like, yeah, this is very exciting. It's to see all these matches that I've, you know, maybe matches I've never seen and things like that, but it's just sort of a strange barrier for me. That's just a personal uh, just a personal opinion. Um, but speaking of the main event, the finals, five star Grand Prix final match, red, red block against blue block. Uh, Shuri defeating Momo Watanabe in 18 minutes and 36 seconds. The Wrestling Observer went four and three quarters. I know Alex Richards on the Voices of Wrestling website went five stars. Kelly. Why don't you go first? You said that the Shuri Takumi Aroha match was your favorite match of the night. So I'm interested to hear what you thought of this match. Uh, I went four and a quarter on this one. I think honestly, the thing that hurt it the most for me is I never bought that Momo was going to win. Like it was kind of, once I saw the match, I'm like, Oh, well clearly series winning. This is, this is how this is going. And there is also a bit of, I'm right. I'm I'm very I'm very correct in my predictions. So obviously I knew how this was going to go. So but yeah, it's it never it never felt like Momo was going to win. I did bite on a couple uh near falls just cuz they did work really hard. 
it was a super hard fought match. It was really good. But yeah, I think kind of knowing who was going to win going into it hurt it a little bit for me. Yeah, I was uh, I was fully spoiled because I watched it a few days later and I'd seen some posts and things like that that, uh, talking about Siri winning. I think I also probably would not have bought Momo winning anyway had I not been spoiled. So I was exactly the same as you. I was four and a quarter stars. I thought it was very good. Um, But again, felt like sort of the two matches before it. I think one thing that I have found interesting is that I find the sort of build of some of these matches interesting and I can sort of see why, you know, some people like give these huge stars and I'm a little bit lower. I think sometimes these matches feel a little bit like it's in like first gear for like a few minutes, then it's in second gear for a few minutes and then it's in like fifth gear for like 15 minutes. And I'm like, this is a lot of like, we're throwing bombs, we're doing kicks, we're kicking each other in the face, we're dropping each other on the head. And it's just like constant, like, big move, big move, big move, big move, big move. And I'm like, this is good, but it's not like it, at some point, it feels like it's not building anymore. It feels like it's just sort of like what big move, like you do a big move and now I will do a big move and oh, crazy, we're look at this kick and oh my god we're dropping each other on our, the head and i think i like matches that are a little bit more like you know we're building we're building we're building we're building and then we peak and then you know the match is over i mean there's obviously uh exceptions to that rule but i don't know i was just watching and i knew that um it had gotten you know, this huge four and three quarters in the wrestling observer. So maybe that's another thing where I went into the match going, Oh my God, this match is going to be incredible. Uh, you know, sort of victim of expectations. Again, I thought it was four and a quarter. I still thought it was an excellent match, you know, two to me, Shuri and Momo Watanabe, probably in my opinion, two of the better, if not two of the best in ring wrestlers in the entire company. Totally. Um, so I thought it was very good, but didn't quite reach the heights that other people saw it. No, I feel like Momo losing this match kind of makes her look bad because it's like just two matches ago, Siri had a 20 minute long war with Aroha and then she comes in pretty beat up to this match and still finds a way to win. Like, I feel like oh, if maybe yes. you had moved the Siri Aroha match earlier in the card, that would have been not as bad so she would have had some time to rest but it's like she had maybe 20 minutes in between matches for them pretty much because those tam and utami went or tom and utami went for 14 and i guess six minutes or so for ring entrances and stuff so yeah like that's not a huge amount of time to rest i mean wombo was coming off being handily defeated by hanan earlier in the show so i mean she was hurting too i guess but yeah, Momo is, as we've talked about, we've talked about this on the podcast. It's so just her booking is so fascinating to me. She's obviously super talented. She had that long title reign a few years ago. And there's always this constant talk of like, oh, Momo, she's she's moving back up the card. Now, she's still very young. Um But it's like, oh, she's moving up the card. And I'm sure a lot of people were like, hey, she's in the finals. This is great. To me, she was in the finals solely to lose. Yeah. As you said, and as I also thought, I thought she really had no chance. Um, Really, because you have to be careful with who you put in the finals. You don't want to put someone hot in the finals and have them lose. And so you're like, well, Momo's good because we can beat her at any time. She doesn't really have any momentum behind her so it's sort of like a double edge you know two two sides of the same coin where it's like well she was in the five star grand prix finals and it's like yes as someone who really had no chance to win and didn't you know doesn't appear all that hot it doesn't appear that the promotion is all that interested in really doing that much with her like i don't really have any inkling of what her future holds um, it's like I was saying with Azumi, they're really only interested in the new toys right now. And Momo has been around for, with them for a long time. And it's kind of like, eh, we're kind of bored of you, but I guess you're good. So we'll put you in the finals. 
Yeah, so it'll be interesting to see. I don't know. Maybe this is the something goes on with Momo saying, oh, I got to the finals and I lost and I need to do this. You know, I don't know what they'll do going forward. But yeah, just sort of one of those, you know, we've been talking about on this podcast forever. Momo Watanabe, as I believe, as I just said, probably one of the most talented in-ring wrestlers in the entire company, if not maybe in all of Joshi. And just... uh seemingly not in the not in any big plans uh for the company right now which is a shame but overall as you said as i said i think a very solid show um i'm certainly interested as we'll talk about in a few minutes in the uh, osaka joe show because i think that that is really going to give a good sense of where the company is because it's a little bit more of a varied show with some tag multi-person matches tag matches things like that which is more of sort of my speed of show but still i thought the show was a very very good and a a very good cap to the five-star grand prix for this year yeah definitely i i liked it quite a bit so we will run through everything else that's been going on in the last two weeks of joshi stardom uh, they did have shows on September 20th and the 23rd. Those were five-star Grand Prix shows, so we won't cover those because we've already covered the finals. They also had a show a few hours ago, a few hours before we're recording this, I should say, uh, on October 3rd. The big event there, Maika Himika Natsupoi, the Donna Del Mundo team, defeating the Cosmic Angel team of Tom Nakino, Mina Shirakawa, and Unagi Sayaka to win the Artist of Stardom. Titles, I believe that the Cosmic Angels fall in what I believe is their eighth defense, which is a very high number for that title. And also, uh, people will be happy to know that it was the return of the tag time limit draw. They had a time limit draw in the mid card. Oh, good. Uh, As everyone knows, those are my favorite types of matches in all of stardom. God, why? Why? Who wants that in the mid card? Like, come on. Uh, and Seedling had their big show with the two big matches, Ryo Mizunami retaining the Beyond the Sea title against you. Uh, I believe she announced that she is headed back to AEW for at least a little bit. So she will be bringing, or she will be going there as the defending champion. And then in the semi-main uh, Hiroyu Matsumoto and Nanai Takahashi winning the Beyond the Sea tag titles, defeating Asuka and Makoto. So there is one title change on that show. Tokyo Joshi had two shows on September 20th and the 23rd. Nothing much happening there as they get ready for Wrestle Princess 2. Uh, Sendai Girls Mika Iwata and Manami defeating the marvelous team of Mio Momono and Rin Katakura to win the Sendai Girls tag titles back for their home promotion. Uh, Ice Ribbon on September 26th, Maya Yukihi and Risa Serra defended, successfully defended the tag titles against the triple uh, six team of Maika Ozawa, who is on Ryu, and Maya Yukipi, who is Konaka. They have been running a sort of rebel and enemy uh i don't know what you call it parody group okay in triple six i was very confused when i saw the pictures <laughs> from this match <laughs> okay i am uh, now i get it i believe that's uh i believe I, I believe it's a parody group i'm not all that familiar with the goings on at triple six um but i believe that's what it is but maya and risa successfully defending their titles um, and Ice Ribbon has also been running the Wrestle Arena League Queen of 10 Minutes Tournament. These are 10-minute matches. There's four blocks. The current block standings, Block A, Akane Fujita at the top with four points. She has two wins. Suzu Suzuki and Bani Okawa both at zero points with one loss, and Hamako Hoshi at zero points. She has not had any matches in the block yet. Block 2, Tekla on top. Four points, two wins. Mochi Miyagi uh, at two points with a win and a loss. Yappy at zero points with two losses. And Micah Ozaki, zero points but has not had any matches yet. Block C, Risa Serra on top with a win. Asahi 
at zero with one loss, and Ibuki Hoshi and Maya Yukihi have zero points and have not wrestled yet. And in block D, Sakushi on top with three points with a win and a draw. That draw coming against Tsukasa Fujimoto, who has one point. Yuki Mashiro has zero points. She lost to Sakushi and Totoro Satsuki at zero points has not wrestled yet. So that is ongoing uh, in Ice Ribbon. Ice Ribbon, uh, Sakushi, Sukasa Fujimoto, and also Momokogo from Actress Girls are in Mexico right now wrestling for CMLL. They had a match this weekend. Uh, only the highlights have come out. I watched it. It was about three and a half minutes of highlights. Uh, looked good, but of course, it's only three and a half minutes of highlights, so sort of hard to tell. I believe, uh, based on what I hear, and I think based on what Cubs fans, Cubs fan posted, uh, they will have a match on Tuesday the 5th that will be airing live from Guadalajara. I believe that may be the only match of their excursion that will be airing live. I know the match from this weekend will air in full, I believe on October 16th. So if you're interested in that, uh, pretty exciting to be able to see those wrestlers work a more sort of Lucha, uh, Lucha Libre style. So check that out. I never thought on this Joshi podcast that I would talk on multiple weeks in a row about CMLL. (laughs) No. And I think uh, on Twitter, Cubs fan posted a schedule of all of their announced matches so far. So you can check that out and see what where they're going to be next. Uh, my hope yeah, is I that think... Sakushi goes rogue and wrestles Ricky Marvin in some venue with a dirt floor. Um, I also think that Cubs fan document is going to have the links for the matches if they go up or slash when they go up. Um so you can find him on Twitter. I believe his Twitter handle is Lucha Blog. Yeah. Um, and you can find him. And I believe it's the pin tweet is the Ice Ribbon uh, information. It's in a Google document or a Google sheet or something. Uh, but check it out there. Um, Diana had two shows on the on September 20th. Sakura Hirota won the Queen Elizabeth title in a three-way match with Jaguar Yokota and Yumioka. And Kyoko Inoue retained the Diana title over Raideen Hagane. And Diana just had a dojo show last night uh, with appearances from Ice Ribbon, Akane, Fujita, and Tekla both appearing. So that's exciting. Oh. Uh, yeah. Uh, and that is on YouTube, uh, up on the Diana YouTube if you want to check it out. Usually those dojo shows, I haven't watched that one yet, but usually they're only about an hour. They're three matches. They go pretty quickly. So um Always worth in my always worth in my opinion uh, checking out because they're pretty fun and easy watches. An hour wrestling show is like the same thing to me as like an eighty minute movie where I see it and I'm just like, oh, thank you. Yeah, it's very. I mean, three. I think someone actually posted on Twitter. Now this was about uh, AEW Rampage, but they're like one hour three match wrestling is the peak of the form. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's just very easy. Get in, watch it, get out, and you're like, great, done. Uh, so, And, of course, I always want people watching those dojo shows from Diana because I want uh, more of them. So uh, check that out on YouTube for free. Uh, Actress Girls uh, had a show on September 25th, Kakaru Sekaguchi and Miko Aono defeating the Momos, Momokogo and Momotani to retain their colors um, tag titles. Uh, Marvelous had a show on the 27th and also on the 1st in conjunction with Wave, the Tommy 40th anniversary. Uh, Sakura Hirota losing the Queen Elizabeth title uh, to Yumioka in a three-way match with Yumioka, Sakura Hirota, and Tomoko Watanabe. So a quick win and a quick loss uh, there. And also Nagisa Nozaki went to a time limit draw with Takumi Aroha. So that sounds interesting. Yeah, that sounds cool. Uh, Wave had a, a small show on the 26th. Uh, Kelly, you have anything to say about uh, Chaco Pro? It's been a pretty quiet. Uh, yeah, they've been kind of for them. quiet lately uh, on the. Uh, Masahiro Takanashi produce show. There was a Joshi match that was pretty good with uh, 
Mesa Ruga and Yuna Mizumori taking on uh, Rina Yamashita and uh, Saki Akai. That was pretty good. I enjoyed that. And a rare chance to see uh, Saki Akai and uh, Mesa Ruga in the ring at the same time. Yes, uh, they they very rarely uh, wrestle on the same show. Yeah. Um, and then Pure J having two shows on September twenty first, uh, September twenty third. Excuse me, Akari retaining the Princess of Princess title against Chie Ozora. So that covers everything from the last two weeks of Joshi. But coming up, we've got some big shows. The first uh, of the two big shows, Stardom, October 9th at Osaka Joe Hall. We're going to go through this match by match. Starting off, kicking off in the dark match, Lady C and Waka Sukiyama against Saki Kashima and Hina. Uh, Kelly, wh- what do you think about this match? Um, I hope Lady C gets another win. She she got her first pinfall victory, and that made I'm very excited for her. So I hope she gets to win again and kicks those Wado Tai geeks further down the card. Uh, well, this is the dark match, match zero. So exactly, I'm not sure how much keep on, <laughs> keep on kicking them down farther. Well, across the street, let's go. <laughs> Kelly, another match I'm sure you're excited for based on what we already talked about. The nope. future of stardom title, Unagi Sayaka facing off against Ruaka. This is going to be bad. I can tell you that right now. This is going to be a bad match. I think, in my opinion, Unagi is going to retain. Uh, Hopefully. Do you no, I mean, I don't. Yeah, no, I don't want Ruaka to win. Go Unagi. This is one of two titles where, and we'll talk about the other title in a few minutes. I just feel like they don't have enough people. No. This is very much like like you're better off if you lose it kind of title almost. Where it's like, oh, that means you're being moved up the card. Because it's like Unagi, Ruaka, Mina, Mai Sakurai, um, Waka, Lady C. Hina, Hanan. Like, that's it, but it just feels sort of like, okay, it's not going to be Mina because Mina had it and lost it. Yeah. It's like there's only so many it's challengers. Like the, the only people left are like Lady C and the children. And it's like, who's going to beat Unagi because Unagi feels fairly pushed. So it's like, yeah. well, you have to line up someone who's going to, it's going to not be like, oh, you lost a. So and so, I don't know who that would like, be. Like honestly, I could see it being Ruaka with some Wado Tai nonsense. Yeah, um yes. You can never count out a Wado Tai nonsense. <laughs> Cause it does almost uh, feel like Unagi's kind of higher up than this title at this point. Yeah, but mm, I just don't know if it's like you lose it. I would think you would want to be like you lose it and then you go into something else. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't know. And I just don't know what that next. something else would be. Yeah. Uh, but the next match on the card, a, a tag match, Mina Shirakawa and Mai Sakurai against the Marvelous team, the visiting Marvelous team of Maria, uh, who has returned from her, I believe it was a lower back injury maria and rin katakura uh this match exciting to me i sort of wish the marvelous team were going up against a slightly higher caliber of opponent i like mina uh my sakurai still fairly low on the card and i think maria and rin katakura are very good um but i guess maybe keeping my expectations low it is the technically the second match on the card yeah not including the dark match so you know, may just be in, get some spots in, have a few minutes and get them on the card. And my definitely feels like the pen eater in that match. Oh, 100, 100%. Yeah. So it's like um, the, the outsiders win the match, but they don't really beat someone's established. So like, I, I, I get it, but I, I, I do wish that Maria and Rin were in a better, a higher place on the card, I guess. Well, and especially with what I think is in the main event, Marvelous probably losing. It's yeah. nice to give Marvelous, you know, an easy win. Lower down on the card, but the next match is the first of our many title matches on the card. Starlight Kid 
going up against the very successful in the Five Star Grand Prix, Fuki Gendeth. This is another one where this title feels like it's just a combination of like four people. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Starlight Kid, Azumi, Fuki Gendeth, and Natsupoi. Pretty much. And it's it's like, I win the title, so now I face Fuki Gendeth. Oh, and I lost it to Natsupoi. Okay, Natsupoi faces Fuki Gendeth and loses it to Azumi. Azumi has a title and, you know. It's just like back and forth. I'm sure this match will be fine. Um, yeah, won't, won't have any nonsense whatsoever. We'll have a lot of smoking. Just a straightforward match, not a single newspaper to be seen. Uh, and I'm like, well, Starlight Kid could win, but or Starlight Kid will win, but maybe Fukingen Death wins. I don't know. Maybe they switch it up. Yeah, it's one of those matches where I'm like, ah, I guess it really doesn't matter. <laughs> Who wins, really? Yeah, because I'm like, okay, Starlight Kid wins, won't face Natsupoi because she just beat Natsupoi for the title. So I guess it would be another Azumi match? I guess. Because, yeah, I don't really know who else you you put in there. I mean... Who else is even high? I'm like... Unless you were to do something like Starlight Kid versus Maria. Yeah, I was you know, actually kind of... wins the match that. and she comes out she's like, we just won! And I want to face you. That could be something. Yeah. Yeah, that would actually uh, work. That And that would be great and a match that I would like to see. So now I'm hoping that happens. I just thought of that as I was it was coming <laughs> out of my mouth. And now I really hope it happens. Speaking it into existence. Uh, yes. The next match, which probably should have been, this match was not announced as a title match. And probably that should have drawn red flags when it was announced. But oh, yeah. I didn't think of it. But Micah, the, the new artist of stardom, t- title holders, Micah, Himika, and Natsupoi going up against the Queen's Quest team of Momo Watanabe, Azumi, and Saya Kamatani. Kelly, who do you think wins this match? This seems like a match that's a little bit um, maybe up in the air. I, but I don't not. know. I would assume the champions will retain because this is this will be their first defense. It's like you would think they would win, but maybe they want to give Momo a belt for losing in the finals, you know? Yeah, I mean, I would think that they would win, but I just wonder if after like a long Artist of Stardom title reign with seven defenses, if they're like, haha, a sneaky thing to do would be the next team loses them with zero defenses. I mean, I don't think a lot oh, of really helpful. you thinking swerve, bro? You thinking they're trying to swerve <laughs> us? <laughs> I don't think a loss really helps either of these. Like a loss doesn't usually help, but I'm like, I don't think either of these teams really should be losing to me. Looking at the team construction, I'm like the queen's quest team is going to win between Momo Watanabe and Azumi um, is bad news. So I guess my pick would be Donna Del Mundo retains, keeps the title at least for one defense. Yeah, I think so. Um, But a match that I think could be pretty good. Oh yeah, definitely. With the talent in there. So the next match, the only non-title match on the rest of the card, Hazuki's return, Hazuki versus Koguma. Uh, someone who shocked in the five-star Grand Prix with 11 points. Uh, I know personally, I'm very excited to see Hazuki back. Super talented. Uh, I think was someone who was missed by stardom, and I'm glad she's back because I'm glad to watch her wrestle again. Yeah, I, I'm not the biggest Koguma fan, though, so I kind of wish she was in, I don't know, a different match. Yeah, I just don't know. Because she's got no allegiance yet, Yeah, it's like, okay, where would you put her? You don't really... I don't think you would put her directly into a title match. No. Um, so it's like, mm, where do you go? I mean... And you look at the people who are in sort of non-title matches on this card, and the pickings are not... It's like Hazuki versus Mina Shirakawa. I probably would have gone um, Hazuki versus Azumi. Yeah, but then what do you do for the artist? Because th- now yeah. you've got three. You've got three on two. <laughs> yeah. Because, yeah. Because uh, everyone else is occupied, so it's like sort of it's a good match. Get her back in. You know, you don't need a big Hazuki match on this card, as we'll see. We've got some big title matches coming up. Um, but yeah, just something to get her back to, uh, 
sort of being comfortable in a stardom ring, and hopefully it's good uh, before we kick off the big business portion of the of the card. Uh, the business portion of the card kicks off with Suri versus Konami for the SWA title. So the five star Grand Prix winner goes into the next show and defends her title against Konami. You would assume that she would win this match to keep up her momentum, but a match that I think will be will be very good. Yeah. To very again, two people who are very similar in style or can be very similar in style. So I think that this one will be a lot of fun. Yeah, no, this should be really good. And Konami beat her in the tournament, right? That's where this match comes from. Uh, I believe so. I believe. Okay, yeah. I believe all of these top three matches come out of the tournament. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, no, this should be good. Uh, this is another match I think could have some Widow Tai nonsense. So maybe if Siri was to drop the title, that would be how it happens. I mean, I'm conflicted because I think there's probably two. Th- I think you probably at this point are close to, or maybe at the point where you're like, okay, this title has served its purpose for Suri. Like she's now pretty established. She's won the five star Grand Prix. So you would like to get the title offer, but I just don't know. It's like you won the five star Grand Prix. And because you want to sort of build now you have yeah. a long build all the way to the end of December. But I don't know if the first thing after she wins a tournament to be like, she lost to Konami. Yeah. Is like if you if people look at that and go, oh, well, that's why you need to have the note of she got hit in the head with luggage. And everyone's like, oh, OK, yeah, you get a pass. She got she got distracted by Hina. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, now it makes sense. Uh, OK. Not your uh, fault. A, yeah, a sad but, clown made her smoke a fake cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> but hopefully the Oedo tie interference is limited if there's any at all. And hopefully it's a good match, which I think it very well could be. Yeah. Yeah. If I wasn't worried about any sort of interference, I would automatically say this will. there's a real good chance this is my favorite match on the card. But we'll see. The semi-main event for the Wonder of Stardom title, Tom Nakino, the champion, going up against Mayu Iwatani, the challenger. This is another one that should be very, very good. Uh, Mayu up up near the top of the card, going up against Tom. I mean, this to me is uh, should be a great match, and I'm really looking forward to it. I think hopefully, I'm hoping that Tom wins. Tom feels like someone who sort of has cooled off a bit, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Uh, she got the big win against Utami on the 25th, but it just feels like someone who has sort of sunk below a lot of all the other stuff that's been sort of highlighted in the company. So I'm hoping that she can win here and sort of reestablish herself with that title. And as someone closer to the top of the, of the card for me, that's what I hope happens. But I think either way should be a good match. I mean, these Mayu big matches are usually, if there's anything you can really count on in the company, it's those. So I'm assuming that this will be very good. Yeah, no, this should be awesome. And but yeah, to what you're saying, I kind of forgot every now. I forget every now and then that Tom has the belt just because it really it doesn't feel like a focal point at all in the company right now. Yeah, and I think that there's so there's a lot of moving, you know, I think the five star Grand Prix naturally is very hard because you're focused on the tournament and they had the stuff with Suri and Utami that really blew up. So I think there's been sort of not completely through the fault of Sarnam, but it's just the way that things have worked. It's sort of slid back yeah. a little bit. But hopefully, as I said, that this is sort of the reestablishment of like, yes, still good. Uh, near the top of the card, you know, a worthy champion um, going up against the quote unquote ace of stardom. Mm-hmm. And, and that's just what happens when you have a secondary major title sometimes it just takes a back seat for a while well and on this show it will take a small back seat to the main event for the world of stardom championship utami hayashita against marvelous's takumi aroha this should be awesome uh, an excellent match i'm very <laughs> I mean, excited for this yes 
I, I mean, was also kind of confused say? with this because I saw the announcement. Uh, I saw the tweets where it was like, okay, Siri won the thing. And then immediately it was, I saw the like match, the picture for this match. I was like, wait a minute, what? Did Siri not win? <laughs> like, hold on. Did Aroha win this somehow? And I was very confused. Like, oh, okay. She'll just get her title shot at a different time. All right. <laughs> Yeah, I always find it a bit weird when it's like, I win a tournament, in my mind, personally to me, and it's a bit weird because the title shot is two plus months away, but I'm like, to me, no one else should be getting a title shot. Yeah. Just just sort of like in kayfabe, like no one else should be getting a title shot before the person who wins this tournament gets it. And especially with this particular story where it's like if Utami's not the champion when uh, Siri gets her title shot, what's the point? (laughs) Yeah, so I'm not totally bothered by it, but I'm just sort of like it's one of those weird things that sometimes happens where I'm like, I would not have. uh, I would not have done that, but it sort of is what it is in terms of the booking and, you know, needing. I mean, you need multiple big things. So I guess unless the other thing is you come out and you say, oh, it's Utami against Yuri and we're doing it now. And then it's like, okay, so you built up this two month long tournament for a title match that you build for um, two weeks. Yeah. And then it's like, well, that's not great either. So I get sort of squeezing in a different uh, match in here. But just from a kayfabe perspective, I'm like, if I was the winner of that tournament, I would be saying, She's not defending against anyone until she defends against me because exactly. I want that match. I won the, I won the, uh, you know, tournament and that's what I want, but you know, we'll see. And as I said, should be an excellent match. Um, you know, certainly a match capable of getting stardom back in the, uh, back having people talk about them again, Yeah, uh, which is, which is what they're looking for at a big show. Hopefully they draw a big crowd. I thought the crowd at uh, Oda Ward was very good. Mm-hmm. Um, really the first show I've watched in quite a while where I didn't at some point sit and go, ooh, the crowd. Yeah, no, the crowd actually felt pretty hot throughout. So that was good. Hopefully they'll have a hot crowd here and hopefully the show will be good. But overall, you know, I think the undercard is a bit, uh, not their strongest undercard they've ever done, but certainly the top. I think once you get to sort of the artist titles up, which is mostly title matches. It's a pretty strong uh, card for them. Mm -hmm. And then stardom also has shows on October 16th and 17th. Obviously we don't have cards for those because they'll come out after this Osaka Joe show. The show on the 17th is at Corican. Um, Seedling also has a Corican hall show on the 13th as well. Uh, But the other big show coming up, uh, in the next two weeks is Tokyo Joshi's Wrestle Princess 2 happening also on October 9th. So a big uh, day of wrestling and we'll dive into that show as well. That show opens with a six person tag match. Raku, Palm Harajuku and Ram Kaichao against Haruna Neko, Mahiro Kiryu and Kaya Torabami. I'm very excited to see Ram Kaichao in a match here excited to see what she does on this opening match what about you kelly i somehow totally missed that she got booked for this show that's awesome i think there was some movement like they initially announced the card and then they sort of shuffled there's another match um the three-way match which we'll talk about in a second yeah i knew that, that one got, got reconfigured changed. okay well that's so awesome I think, yeah yeah uh, so excited to see Kaya Tormit Bami, but also excited to see Ram Kaicho. Excited in general to see some people who don't work Tokyo Joshi or don't work them often on this card. And Ram yeah. Kaicho is the first of, of a handful of people like that. Yeah, that's awesome. The next is the three way match, which we just mentioned Rika Tatsumi against Hyper Masao against Nodoka Tenma. I'm sure with Hyper Masao's involvement in this match, there will be some silliness, but uh, a pretty cool, a pretty cool match. Uh, three very talented wrestlers in Tokyo Joshi. So another one, not to sound like a broken record that I'm looking forward to. Yeah. Who was it that was added to this match? I can't remember that came back. Rika was added That's to right. the match. Yes. She had a back injury, was it? 
She was out with something. I don't remember what the injury was. Um, but happy to see her on this card as, yeah. you know, one of the bigger recent title holder. So happy to have her added. Uh, the next match, Yuki Kamafuku teaming with Asuka against now Kakuda and Marika Kobashi. I sort of selfishly wish Asuka were facing off against slightly higher uh, talent here. I do really like Kobashi. I think she's very good. But, you know, Asuka, as I've talked about on the show, I think is one of the best and I think could really be put anywhere on this card and really succeed. But excited to see her here in Tokyo Joshi and maybe uh, moving forward, she makes some more appearances. Yeah, no, that'll be cool. And, you know, there's always a chance she and Riho get on a plane afterwards and head to America for AEW. Kelly, don't tease me like that. (laughs) Don't tease me like that. You you never know. You know, it's my... Look, I have already in my mind um, fantasy booked the Asuka debut in AEW. It doesn't come for a while because in my mind... Thunder Rosa in a little bit. Thunder Rosa defeats uh, Britt Baker for the title. She has a nice reign with it. And then Asuka comes in as the killer heel that takes the title off Thunder Rosa. Uh, anyway, that's a side, <laughs> that's a side conversation. Uh, but who knows? Maybe it happens. But the way things are going with Riho, um, maybe they don't go back to AEW because who the heck knows what's happening with Riho? Yeah. Um, I, and I feel thing. like maybe Asuka and Camille might be a team for a while because they, they did come up with a team name. They are uh, Vinny or Vinny you. So they, they've got a tag name. So they might there be in it goes. for the long haul. Maybe a future uh, princess tag team title challenger. Yeah, that would be cool. Uh, maybe in the future. But speaking of Riho, she's in the next match. Uh, Riho and Soko Nakajima against Suzume and Riso Endo. Uh, Suzume losing her B-star tag partner, teaming with Arisa Endo here. This should be a very good match. I'm happy to see Riho. The story of Riho over the last year has been one that is very confusing to me. Not unlike um, a Where's Waldo book. Yeah, she was back in AEW, then she went away, and then she... They made a big deal of her being back. She was on Rampage, and then she disappeared again, and now she's seemingly in Tokyo Joshi. It's got to just be a case of she's like, hey, I fucking hate America, you guys. I don't know what it is. It's just such a weird... Because she announced she's like, I'm moving to America full time. Yeah, that's right. And I think this will be... I think maybe she's had two matches in America since she announced that, and this will be her first match in Japan. It's just very i don't know there's something yeah, very weird to me very strange uh i'm excited to see riho and uh endo against each other i think they should have a good chemistry hopefully yeah and to me this could be as we uh this is sort of the last match on this card that isn't sort of a quote unquote big match but i think that this could really be the shocker you know good match of the night now i sometimes say that with these matches like this where i'm like oh it's four really good people and then i come on for the review the the next episode and i'm like oh i built myself up too much so maybe i'm building myself up too much for this one but (laughs) this one i think could be could be very good the next match a special tag match as aja kong makes her return teaming with moko miyamoto against miyu watanabe and yuki arai I'm very excited to see Aja Kong go up against Watanabe and Arai. That's what I'm looking forward to most in this match. Okay, but Should like, be... what what the hell? Where Where is Raku? Why isn't she tagging with Aja Kong? What What happened? They have to keep them apart. The, it's the energy is too powerful. <laughs> this is a it's big. Too, they're like we're supposed to break out the big guns. What are you doing? We can't overshadow the main event, and we I can't mean, have Aja yeah. Kong and Raku in the same match. That is true. Um, but another one that should be a lot of fun. Like I said, I'm looking forward to Aja going up against Watanabe and Arai. So, uh, should be good. The last non-title match Do on we think the card. Miyu is going to try the, uh, the, the giant swing on Aja Kong. I think, I think she is. <laughs> I, and I think the key word there may be try. Yeah. 
Um, she but did yeah, I'm pull sure, off that I mean, double giant swing, which is one of the more impressive things I've seen in a wrestling ring in quite some time. Yeah. Um, but I think with them, the two of them in the match, it almost has to. Yeah. It seems too obvious not to happen. Um, but then the first of the title matches, the international princess title, the champion Hakari Noah going up against Yuki A. Aono. Um, uh, this is a match I'm looking forward to. Should be should be very good. Kelly, what do you think? Yeah, I think this should be good. Um, I would assume Hikari retains, probably. Like, I, don't, I just don't have a feel Ooh. like, oh, this is going to be a title change match, but who knows? I don't know, although Yuki beating Miyu a couple weeks ago, maybe that's Oh, the, that is true. It's like, oh... That's the thing that I'm like, oh, it could be. I mean, the question is, does Akari know? Because the whole thing about like Yuki Kamafuku had it and felt very established and it felt like, okay, this is good. And so she lost the title and it didn't feel like, ah, oh, it's too soon. Yeah. I'm like, does it feel too soon for, for Akari Noah to lose the title? I'm not. I don't sure. really feel like I she's can... done much of anything with the title. Yeah, I'm like, hmm. Because I, I, mean, I certainly honesty, could see. I don't think I can name any of her def- any of her defenses. Um. Well, she had the defense against. Didn't she? Wait, hold on. <laughs> see, <laughs> now you've thrown me off because I'm like, wait, she defended against Marika Kobashi. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 And then she defended against. Why am I not remembering this? Oh, this is really going to bother me. Yeah, but see, I'm just, I think she needs to have more of a run or like she needs a memorable match. Yeah, so, but this is, mm, I'm like, this is the one I could most see going either way on the card, but then I'm looking at the rest of the card and I'm like, "Mm, is that true? Um, But I could see it going either way. I don't think if Yuki won that I would be like, oh my God, what a shock. Like, I can't believe it. Yeah. I'd be like, okay, that makes some sense, you know, or maybe Hikari Noah has heard you and says, I'm going to drop the title and now do just death matches because Kelly called me out. Yeah, I hope so. Uh, about the death matches. Bring in, uh, bring in Suzu Suzuki for a title defense. Let's go. Um, but should be, should be a good match. I mean, really a perfect sort of, uh, international princess title match for me to people who um you know are very talented but aren't really at the top level of the company so this is really the perfect example of what they've been using the international princess title for test hikari and fly in sadika <laughs> you are a big sadika fan this is like the fifth time i've heard you talk she about rules. her in she the rules. last two days well, she's, she's been having cool matches in ICW and fucking broke her arm when I was like, I'm still going to wrestle. I'm still going to hit people with tubes, even though I have a cast on my hand. The semi-main of the show, the Princess Tag Team titles, the Neo Bishiki goon team of Saki-sama and Mei San Michelle, the champions against... Yuka Sakazaki and Mizuki. Uh, this should be a good one. They just this week, as Kelly tweeted about from our Twitter account, JBOM Audio, they posted the 2019 match between Nia Bishiki Goon and Yuka and Mizuki, uh, which both Kelly and I were live in attendance for. Um, but I think that this one will be even better than that one yeah. uh, with the addition of Mace and Michelle. So this is one I'm really looking forward to. I think that this could really be the, I mean, to me, this could might be the best match on the show. Yeah. This is the is match I'm a most lot. looking forward to. Cause I, I think it'll be awesome. This is definitely the highest spot that Mace and Michelle has had in her career. So I'm super excited to see how that, how she handles it and, the interactions with Yuka Sakazaki and Mizuki. And uh, pretty exciting to see that uh, May, well, May San Michel was uh, low on the first Wrestle Princess show, uh, slash wasn't on it. 
um, and now <laughs> is in the semi-main. Yeah, no, that's super cool. Which is pretty cool. And, you know, back then with the debut, I said this was a great pickup for Tokyo Joshi, and she fits the style really well. And I've been proven right because here she is in the semi-main event of, yep. of their big show. Speaks to her talent. So chalk another one up for me. Thank you. Uh, and in the main event, probably the other match I think could be the match of the night, obviously. The Princess of Princess title, the champion Miyu Yamashita going up against Maki Ito. Kelly, is this the moment that Maki Ito wins the big one? I think so. I think it has to be, finally. like she's She's really stepped up. I think this is her time. Yeah, I agree with you. I just don't know if Ito doesn't win. Like, where does Yamash? Like, what is the purpose then of this Yamashita reign? Unless it's at some point down the line, she loses to someone like Mizuki, who is looking for that win. But it just seems too perfectly set up to end the show. Maki Ito, you know, the AEW you know, who went over to AEW, got over big in AEW to have that moment of be like, this has been the big year for you. You went out in the world, you went to AEW, you did all this stuff, you fought back, you've, you know, gotten tougher. And now in the big show of the year, you win the whole thing. Of course, I also thought that that was going to be the story last year with Mizuki and that she would win the title and she didn't win the title. Um, so, Certainly not a guaranteed lock, but to me, if I were booking, that's what I would do. Maki Ito would end the show holding the title big celebration. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm not one of the betting degenerates in the uh, Voices of Wrestling Slack, but if I were to put money down in a match, I would put money down on Maki Ito here. Hmm, that's interesting because I think I wouldn't put money down on Maki Ito in this really? match. Really? Okay. Yes, because as I just said, I thought that that was the story with Mizuki last year where she would win. She didn't win. And I just think there's a little bit of doubt in my mind. I mean, the whole Miyu reign, it was really surprising to me that she got the title back. So I don't know. There's just something about it that I'm like, I think that this is the way this is the thing that makes most sense to me. But maybe they don't do it. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I just I feel like now is the time. Like Maki Ito is at her highest popularity ever and you're trying to push for more subscribers for Wrestle Universe right now, especially. So you'd want to put her as kind of the face of the company, I would think. Yes, but but we will see. And it's good to have, you know, not a match that I go in and think, oh, so and so is definitely winning. Yeah. And then there's no drama. So overall, uh, a very good show again on the night to very strong shows, lots of wrestling. We'll be covering both of those shows uh, on the next episode, certainly in detail. You can watch that show live on the brand new Wrestle Universe. Kelly, have you signed up for the brand new Wrestle Universe? Yet? I have signed up. I haven't used it yet, though. Yes, I I also have signed up. I haven't watched it yet, although I'm seeing all the new features, so I'm excited to. I may uh, dive in and maybe watch something else. Uh, before the Wrestle Princess show, just to see what it's capable of, because supposedly there's a lot of cool things. You can switch between the Japanese and English commentary without having to switch pages. By the way, uh, there will be English commentary for Wrestle Princess 2. It will be uh, Chris Brooks and Balianaki again. Hell yeah. Love that team. So excited to see. I'm also interested that, you know, Stuart Fulton doing stardom now. Uh, I'm just wondering if that is a permanent move and maybe Chris Brooks and Bali and Aki may be the permanent uh, Tokyo Joshi English commentators will be interesting to see. I thought that uh, Fulton Pickering and Brooks was a very good uh, commentary team. Um, and I also think Brooks and Aki have been very good. So they've done very good at uh, almost everyone that they've had on this commentary booth for Tokyo Joshi. So looking forward to that, I will probably be watching in English just because I like the English booth. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, and like stardom, Tokyo Joshi will have a show on the October 16th. Nothing announced for that yet. Obviously Sendai girls is having a show on October 5th. 
Uh, Ice Ribbon has a few shows coming up. The one big match that's been announced so far on October 17th, there will be a Triangle Ribbon title match. The champion Totoro Satsuki against Miku Aono and Rina Shingaki. Actress Girls will have a Wave Tag title match on their October 9th show. The champions Saki and Hikari Shimizu against me and Rina Amakura. And Diana will have a Corican Hall show on October 10th that will be main evented by a Legends against uh, Young Wrestlers, we'll call it. I'm just making that title up. Hyoko Inoue, Shinobi Kandori, Aja Kong, and Takako Inoue against Haruka Umasaki, Ayame Sasamura, Rina Shingaki, and Amy Miura. So that should be a lot of fun. Kelly, is there anything exciting coming up in the next two weeks of chuckle pro i got nothing uh last night was their season nine finale and there is nothing announced past that well there you go and that is that is everything kelly do you have anything more you want to say before we sign off not really just really looking forward to the big shows coming up Yes, and we will be we will be back in two weeks covering both those big shows. So look forward to that. And I'm Taylor and for Kelly. Thank you again for listening to Jumping Bomb Audio, and we will see you in two weeks.